Carl. How's it going? We're good. We are good. And we're we're up to the minute on time. We'd like to run them on time, Jack. Good. That's good. Yes, sir. Not a problem. Give these people a couple more minutes and then we will get rolling here. No worries. That's awesome. No problem. Good morning, Jack, good morning. I'm going to give you, you still have a, uh, a PowerPoint? I do. Okay, I'm going to make you a co-host so you'll be able to come on in whenever you get ready. So Okay, great. Good morning. Good morning. Good hey, morning. good morning, everybody. I see a lot of smiling faces here. Lots of smiling faces. Good morning. Yeah, buddy. Keith, I like your background. That looks good. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I hunt it night and day for that thing. <laughs> hey, hey, Keith, tell me, yes. do you use a do you use a green screen behind you or no or Zoom no? has that we'll 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 do because I've had a couple of questions about this. Uh we'll do a class on it. You just go find a picture. Uh you just go and do um just do a image lookup zoom backgrounds and then a whole bunch of them will pop up and you can look for the one you want and then you download that into zoom every, every one of mine that i put up looks like this which i look like a to me at least on my picture you look like a freak yeah yeah that? no no you're you're uh yeah there's something wrong <laughs> if, if I, if, yeah some yeah yeah so, it shouldn't be uh that's a transposition so yeah, it shouldn't be transposing like that and and oh, I've I read that know. if you I've read that if you put a green screen up behind you, it'll get rid of that. When I when I do it on my iPad, that doesn't do that though. Yeah, I mean, it, no, no. I, I mean, you you can see my background. It it doesn't do like that. <laughs> right. Hey, good morning, everyone. We're gonna get rolling here. I got a couple more people to admit. Uh, we're gonna have a big crowd this morning, so uh, and that's good. We're gonna get right into it here, so we can give Jack plenty of time to do his presentation. So we got 13 people online here. I don't see anybody else wanting to come in yet. So we're what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and get started this morning. Hey, good morning to everybody. Uh, welcome to CBN this morning. I see a lot of friendly faces. Uh, two things this morning. Uh, since we do have a pretty large crowd, if you don't mind, if you're not speaking, make sure that you mute so that you don't uh, mm -hmm. uh, make a uh, uh, too many noises, cats, dogs, uh, grandbabies, whatever, you know, whatever the word of the week is. Number two, if you have to leave, no problem. Uh, some of you may have to leave early. I know a couple of people have meeting is like at 930. If you have to leave, just tell us goodbye and, you know, go do what you got to do. So with that being said, uh, what I'd like to do is go ahead and I am <clears throat> going to have you guys introduce yourselves. And uh, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with me, and then we're going to go down. The, I'm going to call your names, and if you would, just give me a minute or so of who you are, uh, where you are at, because we're also from all over the country now, and where you're at, uh, what your business is, and what's a good lead for you. Uh, so if we could, I am going to start with me. Hey, my name is Keith Rand. I run a company called First Quality Printing. I also coordinate the CBM uh, Zoom uh, events. And so I have been in business for almost 32 years. Uh, a good lead for me is anyone that wants anything to do with printing, reproduction, uh, reproduction services. I also do digital and uh, management for people. I store pictures, et cetera. So uh, that's what I am today. Uh, with that, Jerry Luco, if you would, please. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> uh, Jerry Luco, I, uh, ATD Business Consulting slash Franchise Business Source. So I have a, a couple different initiatives, but the main one I focus on is my franchise consulting. And franchise consulting is really very simple. It's um, being an executive recruiter exclusively for the franchise industry. So I help people that are thinking they want to be business owners. Uh, we go through a process to understand a little bit about what fits the requirements. I do a whole bunch of backend research and present them with things that uh, be unbeknownst to them do fit the requirements. 
And uh, then I just kind of guide them along the process, providing them resources and handholding uh, throughout their, their entire journey. Uh, what I want is for people to be able to achieve the American dream and be business owners if that's what they want to be. So I try to make it as seamless as possible. Thank you. Gerald Cowan. Good morning, afternoon or evening. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I'm a lawyer. I'm near Indianapolis in Noblesville. I, my practice is specialized with estate planning, estate settlement, trust settlement, uh, and related uh, services such as powers of attorney. Today, I want to talk briefly about two things, uh, maybe not real pleasant topics, but they could be worth a lot of money to somebody. Uh, there's such a thing as terminally ill estate planning. There's a lot of things that can be done to save taxes when someone's terminally ill, particularly in the income tax area. Uh, secondly, post-mortem estate planning. Uh, my advice to a person uh, of an estate when someone's passed away is don't do anything until we inventory all the assets and figure out how titles are held because there may be ways in which we can move things around through post-mortem techniques to save a bundle of money, like even skipping generations. So uh, Gerald Cowan, uh, uh, I don't know much, but I think I do. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Jerry. Unfortunately, someone always has to follow Jerry. Hey, Jack, I'm going to skip over you because I'm going to let you do your intro uh, at the end. David Garrison, please. Okay. I'm David Garrison with Mutual of Omaha Mortgage. I work with uh, mostly financial advisor and real estate agents in, in determining how we can utilize housing equity, housing wealth to Create your best retirement, which may include something like buying a new home for a, approximately a 50% down payment or refinancing a current mortgage into a reverse mortgage that might liberate proceeds to uh, help affordability for long-term care, delay Social Security benefit inception, um, create a growing line of credit that can be used to mitigate stock market uh, fluctuations. A good lead for me would be, uh, uh, typically I market through wealth advisors and real estate agents. Don't We don't market directly to the to the end user or to the consumer, but uh, if someone knows of a, of a senior uh, that might have a need for this kind of product, I, I usually will put them in touch with a financial advisor who will coordinate up strategy together or, or a wealth advisor who's willing to talk about the concept. Michael. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Mike Chambers. I'm a longtime CBN member here in the north side of Indianapolis, um, recently retired independent insurance agent. So good morning to everyone. Morning. Thank you. Rhoda Israelov, please. Good morning, everyone. Rhoda Israelov here in Indianapolis. And um, our speaker today and I were um, members in National Speakers Association of Indiana chapter uh, since disbanded, but I am very, very pleased that I was able to bring him here today for you to meet. Uh, my business is Say It For You, and we are a team of content writers, primarily of website content and um, blogs. And right now I have my eye on a particular introduction that maybe one of you just happens to know this person. There is a dental practice that has been doing a lot of radio advertising lately. The gentleman's name is, is Shoup, S-H-O-U-P. And they have a, a very new form of dental care that they're promoting. And I would be interested in writing about that, but I need to find someone who knows this particular guy and can make an introduction. So Rhoda, and we say it for you. Thank you, Rhoda. John Vandersaw. Thank you, Keith. Good morning, CBN members and guests. Um, I'm here in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm a licensed real estate agent. I work for FC Tucker Company, which is the oldest and largest firm in central Indiana. Uh, Again, I work in Marion, Marion County and surrounding counties. I work equally with, with buyers, sellers, and investors. And uh, I'll share this morning a good ask or a good lead for me. While we are very much in a, in a seller's market, um, I'm looking for first-time 
buyers. Happy to and, and enjoy educating those individuals. So John Vandersall with FC Tucker. Thank you, John. Adele? Hello, good morning, everybody. My name is Adele Bush. I'm coming to you live from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I own and operate a small business, ASB Business Services, LLC. We do personalized, customized, and exclusive executive telephone outreach. We also do business research and prospect development. And the goal that I have for each one of my clients is to, is to connect them properly, to connect them with the right companies, with the right people, in the right way. A good referral for me would be anyone who is looking for new business, anyone who's looking for more business, anyone who hates to make phone calls, anyone who uses their car as an office. I'll be happy to work with you and help you out to keep that business pipeline full. Adele Bush, ASB Business Services, LLC, Columbus, Ohio. But we can work anywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marianne Yates, please. Um, I'm Marianne Yates and I own Elder Move ZM Transitions. Um, we help people go through the transition of moving, um, orchestrating the move, uh, downsizing people, light packing, total setup, uh, decorating, a lot of decorating. So, um, and um, I, I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana. And um, right now um, we don't have any asks this minute. You know, we might. And uh, thank you to Adele. Uh, Adele reached out to me this week and I really appreciate that. That was very sweet of her. So. Thank, thank you, Marianne. Alex Gray. Hi, my name is Alex Gray. I uh, live on the north side, northwest side of Indianapolis in a town called Zionsville. Um, I run a company called Opine Interactive, which does web site hosting and email hosting. And I am in the process of winding down that company. And I also do equity investing. Thank you, Alex. Mike Ryan, if you would. Mike Ryan, longtime CBN member, partner and leader pro. We are horticulture service providers, landscape maintenance, installation, have a select clientele, uh, work the north side of Indianapolis from downtown, Broad Ripple, Arden, Meridian Hills. Williams Creek, a little bit in Carmel. Uh, fan out over towards Geist Reservoir where I, I live in Indian Lake. And um, good lead is uh, relationships with people that uh, appreciate horticulture services. And um, you know, I'm, I'm selective uh, clientele that, that we pick up uh, typically uh, uh, I have a waiting list of two or three people. It takes about a year to take them on. So that's about it. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Mike's also the, the, the little guy in my ear when I don't call my customers. Uh, for those of you who don't know Mike, Mike has a uh, rather salty vocabulary. And he from time to time reminds us that you, you don't have but one mission. That's to talk to your client, damn it. So, but, but he's more broad than damn it. So let's, uh, so uh, yeah, so Mike, Mike stays in my little brain when, when, I, when I get lazy and don't want to talk to a client. Uh, Gloria, if you would, please. Good morning, Gloria Thomas with Secret Dream Trips. Um, we help people to live better, travel better, feel better, and have better health. So um, right now we're running all kinds of specials. Tomorrow is um, what we're calling Blue Friday. We're gonna have all kinds of um, deals and things that you can come and look at tomorrow if anybody's interested in some last minute shopping. Um, by all means, hit me up. I'll give you a link and you can go and shop from us. So Gloria Thomas with um, Secret Cream Trips. Thank you, Gloria. Tony, I Gloria, can't see Gloria, you. Can you send that link through the chat for everyone? It, yeah. It's something you have to register for. So I'll put my information in. Just give me a con give me a shoot back. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Tony. Tony Havix with PH2. We do environmental health and safety consulting and forensic engineering. 
Uh, at this point in time, I don't have any asks. I'm going to be busy between Christmas and New Year's trying to catch up and uh, ho hopefully catch up on getting the things out the door that I need to get out the door. So with that, I'm done. <laughs> all right. That was quick. Um, I just want to say, hey, thank all you guys for showing up. Uh, hopefully you have a great holiday next week uh, and you stay healthy. Don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about some other stuff. Uh, you get the calendar every week, so check it. Uh, if you are for some reason not getting this email from me, just let me know and I'll follow up and make sure. Uh, with that, though, I want to make sure that Jack has plenty of time. Uh, Jack, it is now the Jack Show. <laughs> the Jack Show. Y'all are in for a roller coaster ride then if it's the Jack Show. Uh, good morning, everybody. Rhoda, thank you so much for uh, referring me to give a little talk to you guys. I'm excited to be here and to share some ideas with you guys. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I've just got a couple of slides. I, I, um, I don't normally use PowerPoint, but I, but today I wanted to. So I just thought, by golly, I'm going to. And uh, let's see here. This one, I think, is what I want to share. There we go. You all should be able to see the uh, you better watch out. You better not you cry. I can see it. So we can Okay, see it. good. They can see it. Good deal. Good, good, good. Well, you know, so what I've noticed in working with clients and then working with different groups and things is that 2020 has kind of been like this, right? It's, uh, you know, <laughs> we thought we were buying cream corn and we got green beans. It's, it's been, it's been a little different. It's been kind of a, uh, you got to pivot. You got to, you got to shift a little bit. So, my, my talk today is, is about how we can manage ourselves. We're the hardest person that there is to manage. We're the hardest person that there is to, to lead. And so, um, and I know that first, <laughs> firsthand that, that I am the hardest person to lead, uh, even for other people to lead me, but especially for me to lead me. So I just want to share a couple ideas about that. Um, so today I want to talk about perspective. I want to talk about meaning, choice, responsibility, and then a reminder or something to remember when we're done. And so perspective, meaning, choice, responsibility, and uh, something to remember as we leave here. So, you know, much of life depends on what we see, what we look at. I don't know if any of you ever been to Hawaii and been on the road to Hana, but this reminds me of the road to Hana. Uh, it's about one car length wide. And if, you, if somebody else is coming the other way, you, you have to back up. You, you can't go around each other. But I just, I love this picture because the little guy on the left is sure that it's a doom and gloom nothing to see world and the person on the right's taking as many pictures as they can. And so how many times do we go through, do we go through a day or through a situation or through an encounter? And we we're like the guy on the left in this picture where we're, we don't see the good in it. We don't see what's in it. So, so it's about perspective. And the, the, the late Wayne Dry, Wayne Dyer said, you know, if you change the way you look at, um, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And so just some thoughts on perspective, because I think this year is a great year for perspective. It's with my mastermind groups and other groups that I've worked with this, this month, I've been asking them to give me two words for how they see their 2020 and two words for how they see their 2021. And, you know, 2020 has been everything from a dumpster fire to a learning experience to, I had to become flexible, which was more than the two words, but that was okay. It's a good point. And I was really encouraged by 2021 because they all looked at growth and opportunity and some of them were scared, much in the same way when we used to ride a roller coaster that, you know, right before you went over the top, it was you were excited and you were scared to death. So it's a lot like that. Um, so just some ways to think about perspective is just to relax, take some time over the holidays to relax. Um, everybody seems to be a little stressed out. We're, we're working harder back to back. I've noticed that used to be like if I'd had an appointment with Rhoda and then I'd go to meet Keith, I had that buffer time in between. And, and what I've learned is with this Zoom thing or this internet thing is we're going back to back to back to back to back. And so we, we don't, we're not taking that, that minute or two or that refresh. We're not putting that pause button. So take some time to relax, step back from it, step back from it, get, you know, get into a book, get into a movie, get into something that just, just take a step away from it. Um, and then start to notice your beliefs. When you start to get upset, um, start to start to put a pause in that. I'll talk about that in a little while later, but start to notice why I'm upset. What's that about? What, what's going on there? Um, so start to examine your beliefs. I think Woody Allen said, you know, reality is a crappy place, but it's the only place you can get a good steak. So, you know, 
Mary Ann's reality is different than my reality, which is different than Glenn's reality. It's we all have different realities. Like Glenn has a wall behind him and it's wood. I have a wall behind me, but it's 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 just a big banner hanging from my ceiling. And I put that up there because I had the same thing that you guys have had sometime with the background thing. So just examine your beliefs, examine because reality is, you know, it, it's subjective. It's just it's not real. <laughs> um, and then notice something new during the day. Notice something new. Notice some something beautiful, pretty, nice. Uh, just notice something new and then be open to possibility. Be open to what could be. So the challenge is, is to is to think about your perspective and then use reflective thinking. At the end of the day, Jim Rohn used to say at the end of the day, you play your tapes back. It tells you how old that quote is. And of course, Jim's been gone now for 11 years, but um, use reflective thinking. Use your journal, use your planner, whatever, just to write some things down about what what the day was like or what you got from the day, not not just get through the day. The next one's meaning. And I love this this quote. This is one of the presuppositions of one of my studies, which is neuro-linguistic programming and NLP. Tony Robbins kind of made it famous. And nothing has any meaning except the meaning I give it. And and where that comes from is I had a client call me and he was really upset and he said, you know, this person disrespected me. And I said, that's impossible. It can't happen. And, and he said, what, how, what do you mean it can't happen? I said, it can't happen unless you let it happen. We learn from the four agreements and from many other philosophers and people that are much wiser than maybe I am. I, I know for sure that I am. But if you let somebody else disrespect you, if you, if you allow that to happen, then, then you've lost control of yourself. That's what, going back to why we're the hardest person to lead, the hardest person to manage. And so you, when, when somebody, if you, if you think that somebody disrespected you, the truth of that is it's more about them and why they're being angry or violent or ugly or whatever the case might be than it is about you. And I had a client that I was working with one time and he came to our meeting and we had a little, little book study going on and he came in and he was really mad. And I said, what, what's going on? He said, well, he goes, I got in a fight at a bar and I got to take this anger management class and it really pisses me off. And he threw his pencil down. And I said, wow. I said, well, I said, well, when's the class? He goes, oh, it's, you know, it's like six weeks. And he's all moaning and throwing stuff around on the table. And I said, so let me get this straight. You're upset. You're mad about taking an anger management class. Is that what I'm understanding? And, and he didn't quite get the connection, right? I said, so you're mad about taking a class about how not to be mad. I mean, do, do you see the irony here? Do you, do you not see that? So how you let things affect you and I, I grant it, it's hard. And, and 2020, is, it's been a challenge for, for a lot of people. It has been. Luckily, there's just about 14 days left. So that's good, right? We're, we're almost through this and, and we'll be into 2021 and, and things will be looking up. So just notice who you, who you allow to get under your skin. The great psychologist from, and, and author from the book, Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl. I, I love Viktor Frankl. I love, I love the book, Man's Search for Meaning. But he says, between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space, our power to choose our response. And in that response lies our growth and our freedom. And so a lot of times people don't realize that when the stimulus happens, the response is not automatic. We choose the response. We choose the response. That takes us back to here. We choose that response. We, we choose it. And I was working with, with a... Um, bunch of over the road drivers. It was with the company Celadon when they were still around. And I was, uh, my task was to teach experienced over the road drivers. Basically it was how not to kill a new driver that got to sit in their rig for a couple of weeks, but it was, they, they called it training the new drivers, but it wasn't, you know, I've never driven a, a big rig. I've been in a big rig and, and they, and they showed me a lot of stuff, but the key was, is this is what we focused on is that space, that, that stimulus and response. When they do something, because you, if you think about an over-the-road driver, they're in a, an eight-by-eight eight square foot area by themselves most of the time. And so when somebody else comes into that space, that, that's, a, that's a big thing. And so it's, it's like they didn't realize, many of them weren't aware that they had a choice whether to be upset or mad or angry or, or whatever the case might be. So this is, this, this is huge. And, and what we're responsible for, our responsibility, we're, we're only responsible for three things. Carl Jung said, and this is, I think this is my all-time favorite quote. It says, until you make the unconscious conscious, it'll direct your life and you'll call it fate. So those little things that, that get you mad, those little things that get us upset, those little things that, can, that control us instead of us controlling it, right? That, that's what he's talking about here. Those things that 
you, you know, it's it, it things seem to happen to us. There's a reason why they do. And so we're we're only responsible for three things. Each of us is only responsible for three things. We're responsible for our thoughts, how we think about things. We're responsible for our feelings, how those thoughts cause us to feel. And we're responsible for our actions. We're not responsible for the outcomes. We're not responsible for the results. Now, if we have the right thoughts and we have the right emotions, feelings, which cause the actions, the right behaviors, then the results should be there. But we can't control the results. We can't control what actually happens. So I guess you could say it's intention too is, is a really powerful thing. And so if you think about it, our thoughts, how you think about things and, and your pattern of thoughts, your habit of thoughts, that's your attitude or your mindset, which directs your feelings. And those feelings then determine your actions. They, they, and then your behavior reinforces those thoughts. I knew that's the way it was. And so to change any of this, you can change your thoughts, you can change your feelings, you can change your actions. Most people focus on the, the actions piece because they think that's what leads to the results. But where lasting change comes is if you focus on the thoughts connection to the feelings. That's where lasting change happens. That's why I've been asking you to think about your meaning, think about things that mean things to you and your perspective. Because when you can change that little piece at the top of, the, of this little pyramid, then a lot of things happen. And then something to remember when all else fails, this is General um, Joe Stilwell. And in World War II, he was in the Pacific Theater um, and he uh, was an interesting guy. He, the China Burma India Theater of War is where he was in World War II. And, and my uncle worked with General Stilwell and he had, um, he had a quote on his wall. It was on, it was on a business card in a, little, in a little bitty frame. And what the quote said was this, it says, illegitimate non carborundum. And, and what that means is don't let the bastards get you down. <laughs> and so that was the phrase. It's, it's not the exact translation in Latin, but General Stilwell, this was kind of a thing when, when some, something didn't happen the way they planned it or something didn't go right. Illegitimate non carborundum. Don't let the bastards get you down. And, and unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there that how they make their day is by making somebody else down. So I, I, I'm, I just wanted to leave you with those few thoughts and just think about control what how your mind is the biggest thing i worked on in 2020 was getting control of this not letting this be in control of me and that that's just something and, and you know so when i work with clients or give give talks it's my heart is around what we just talked about it's around that thoughts feelings actions thing because i've seen that so many times that sometimes people aren't aware of how powerful their thoughts are to control their actions and how their actions then reinforce those thoughts. And I want to leave those things with you today. And I, I appreciate Keith and, and uh, Rhoda very much. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you and to share a short little talk about, remember that you have more control than what you think you do. And I'll answer any questions if you have any, I'm glad to. Thank you, thank you Adele, thanks Rhoda. Thank you Marianne, thank you John. If you want me to mention your name, just clap your hands, I'll mention your name. <laughs> Oh, wait, you're, I can't hear you. You're not, wait, wait, Keith, you're not, you're muted or something. You're not muted, but we can't hear you. Uh -oh. Keith, we can't hear you. Yeah. Mute, unmute, mute. There, now oh. you're not muted. You're not muted. No, we can't hear you though. We still can't hear you. Yeah. You know, this is this is a lesson in 2020 because how many times we've been in a meeting with a client or something through Zoom and this very thing happens, right? And so it's just give a little grace, be patient. Right. Okay. It's I'll blame it on his wife. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. well, let's talk about Keith. He can't say anything. <laughs> oh, Alex, I'm sorry. I, I call I called you Glenn, but Alex, I love your wall. I love that wall behind you. <laughs> so. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. One of the things, Jack, is that why it, um, it's often professed that people should meditate in the morning? Yeah, right. And, and have some kind of a routine, right? So have some kind of way that you get ramped up in the morning. Uh, I'm a John Maxwell coach, which means I just, uh, you may not know who John Maxwell is, but he's an author and speaker on leadership. And um, he says, until you change your something you do daily, um, it won't really change. The secret of your success is found in your daily routine. So that's exactly right. 
you know, you control the day. The day doesn't control you. In, in the book, um, High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard, this book, you can tell I've read it a few times and led a mastermind group through it, a book study through it. But in, in this book, something that just kicked me right in the face was Burchard says that, well, I used to, when I go to a meeting, let's say Rhoda and I were going to have a meeting. I would I let no how idea. that meeting went determine, there you go. You're back, Keith, you're back. Am I but, back? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But how that meeting determined how I felt. He said, no, no, no. Determine the feelings you want to have when you go into the meeting, what you want to have after the meeting. Right. And that was the, to me, that was like, oh my God, why did I never do that? So Keith, you're back. Hey, good. I, I, I don't, did I go out again? No, you're here. Okay. Cause I can't see my microphone anymore. Hey, uh, first off real quick, Jack, uh, before I lose my mic again, I just <laughs> want to say thanks for, for being with us this morning. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, uh, it. It was an interesting conversation for me that, especially this, uh, we choose our responses. I, I think a lot of times, especially now in America, we, we need to choose our responses mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. think before we respond. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we just, all of us, um, no matter what your party is, what your affiliation, what you're like, you're just, oh, we're all just overreacting and just need to spend a minute and like, think, just think, think how it looks, think how it looks to kids, think how it looks to family, you know? So I, I, I got a little note here. I'm going to talk to my grandson about like, think buddy, think before yeah. you do stuff here. So, uh, so with that being said, hey, a couple of quick uh, things here. Uh, we may get out a little early today. D hey, Dave, I am going to send you my background uh, because I don't I don't know why yours is flickering out, but I'll send you mine and we'll work on that and figure that out. Uh, a couple of things uh, in keeping with Jack's uh, conversation. I want us to think just a minute here and we've got a little time. Uh, I want everybody to give me a minute or so of what something you learned from COVID, just a minute. What'd you learn from COVID? I'm gonna start on the, uh, I started at the top before, I'm gonna start at the bottom. Tony Havocs, if he's still with us, if he didn't go hide. <laughs> there he is. I, I, I didn't go hide. Um, although I, I do sit on my other laptop because that's where I take notes at and this is the one that has better audio and, and, and video. So I do my, calls on this one and I do my typing on my, my one next to me. Um, learned from COVID-19 that, that uh, human factors is probably the most important thing uh, th that we should be thinking about with regard to business because the numbers can tell you everything you want, but it's the human factors that tell you what people will do. Thank you. Gloria? Here I am. Okay. Um, the thing that I've learned is kind of like Jack was saying, you know, you need to kick back and relax. I know beforehand, um, I was running here and there, keeping appointments, um, you know, and so it was the appointment traffic, the next appointment, you know, kind of crazy. Um, being at home has, has allowed me to step back a little bit and, you know, just take it easy. It's not as, uh, not as crazy and not as um, urgent, let's say, as I thought it was. All right, Gloria. Mike Ryan. For me, uh, it's relationships. Uh, in what I do, uh, business has been uh, uh, phenomenal. Uh, for, on the supplier side, if you didn't know somebody early on in COVID, uh, and on your supplier side, you probably weren't going to get the parts or the material that you need. Uh, so relationships were paramount. Uh, uh, price uh, was not necessarily a factor if they had it. Uh, you were lucky, uh, and and if they didn't have it, uh, you would pay anything to get it. Uh, on the customer side, uh, people, uh, customers who were uh, less uh, uh, genuine or uh, uh, you know were always in a hurry are now more relaxed and want to know what's going on. Uh, it, it's been fascinating. It'll be fascinating to see what's going to be on the backside of this uh, and, uh, you know, how, how uh, what the extent of the mental health issues, especially with the kids in school, 
are going to be because of the loss of connectivity. So it's going to be fascinating. Uh, it'll be interesting to look back in 20 years, 15 years. Thank you, Mike. Jerry Luco. A uh, few things. Um, I love being able to have all the uh, meetings with people online and virtually. I've actually been working from home. When I was, when I was in corporate, I worked from home. Um, everybody I worked with was in Minnesota and Chicago and stuff like that. So I've been doing remote working for 13 plus years. Uh, but, uh, but we never really did video. We only just did phone, right? So I like the graduation to video. Um, I do not mind not leaving the house for work. I love the fact that I can just look out the window and see the snow and not have to worry about it. But um, I go a little bit stir crazy when I don't like I need to leave the house periodically and just walk around Meyer and have that background noise and the little hubbub and stuff like that. So for work, it's cool. But for personal, I like every once in a while need that stuff. And I've loved seeing the resilience of the kids. You know, it's like, okay, now I got to do this online stuff. And, and I mean, it takes some, it takes some training you know, to get them to pay attention and stuff like that. Um, but it's, I, I love it when I see my grandson sitting there and doing online school and, 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 and he just takes it in stride, right? And, and I, I kind of wish that we all kind of learned from them. <laughs> just like, okay, this is what we got to do. This is what we got to do. Thank you, Jerry. Adele, if you would. Yes, uh, uh, I believe that COVID has helped all of us move outside of our comfort zones. Uh, we've all had to adjust. We've all had to pivot the way we do business, the way we meet with people, uh, even the way we relate to our families. It, it certainly changed everything. And I will say this, it has enriched and enhanced my business relationships because I've met a lot of wonderful people online that I probably wouldn't have met, you know, otherwise, including this wonderful group. So um, as far as my, I'm concerned, I'm content just continuing the way things are right now, working from home, meeting online, um, enriching those relationships. Um, and, you know, I'm okay with just having a few places to go. When I want to get out of the house, I go to the gym and work out. Or I go to the grocery store. We go to church on Sunday. So, you know, I'm happy and I'm content. And in this season of life, I think this is perfect for me. So thank, thank you so much. You. Thank you, Dale. John Vandersaw. So in COVID, I've learned how to uh, meet and greet people without shaking their hands. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> I'll add to that. I knew Keith would enjoy it at least. Um, you know, what, how it has affected the real estate industry is it's added more paperwork and documents. It also brought on more uh, PPE as in, in my field of line of work, every other day I'm walking into a stranger's house and um, that's going to continue walking into strangers' homes for, for many years. Um, so I think I'm going to remain or continue to remain cautious, right? Because it's not, not only is there the unknown of who lives there, health or unhealthy, it's, you don't know, even now, you don't know who was in that house one hour before you walked in. So, uh, prior to COVID, I would hit every light switch and every doorknob and open a few windows. Right. Uh, but now I do that with gloves and in the future, um, I mean, I hit every light switch unless necessary. All right, John. Alex, if you would, please. Um, I, I think I'll speak to it from my in, investor standpoint, uh, because in, in March, April, things were looking pretty pretty dire if you were an investor and that, that was your, your main course of, of business. Um, but I learned to be impatient. Um, patient and stay in the course were the were two big things. Uh, stick with what you know, because it can be very tempting to start to branch out when, when things aren't going right where you're at. And a lot of people, and, and trust me, you, you get your fingers cut off real quick uh, trying to branch out. Um, 
yeah, so stay in the course and, and be prepared. Uh, be prepared for something like this to happen again. Be ready. You know, have your list ready of things you'll do. Or, you know, I had a, I'd actually started making a list of, of investments I would make if, if the market ever took a big hit. And so I was, I was kind of prepared to do some things. Um, luckily, uh, it, you know, just being prepared can, can make a big difference. And things like this do happen. It may not be a, a virus. It could be something totally different. You know, we had the housing crisis. We had whatever it may be. It impacts everybody. It impacts a lot of people's jobs whenever we have these crises, and it, it will happen again. So just, you know, prepare yourself. Thank you, Alex. Marianne yep. Yates. Um, I'm a, I, I, a couple of things that came to mind were one is trust. Um, we're finding that we're being hired because people trust that we are going to do um, what we tell them to do, especially on the safety level. Um, and they do not trust other companies. Um, so they are trusting us. And um, because of that too, I've also found that our, um, our relationship with our customers is deeper. They're very lonely. Um, they, they're isolated. Um, and they're afraid of what they're doing because especially if they're moving into a retirement community, because they've heard all the horror stories about the isolation and, and uh, not being able to leave their apartments, et cetera. So we become kind of a lifeline uh, for them. And so it's a much deeper relationship um, and, and spiritual. The other thing that I think that this has taught me is that Christmas cards do not matter. And I instead food banks do. So um, I am going that direction too. I'm not sending out, I sent out like 20 food Christmas cards to people who I knew were lonely and were going to be isolated. So I considered it more of a ministry um, and um, a work ministry, but the rest of my money is going to food banks. Thank you, Marianne. That's a, that's a heck of a thought. I hadn't thought about that. Rhoda. One of the things that I have learned with all this Zoom networking, and I do three of these a day, so this network after work, national network meetings, is that when normally when you are networking, looking for a particular kind of client that you think can become, do business with you. And if, if your mind says, no, this is not going to happen, you, you stop listening and you stop learning from that person. But in these, these meetings, you're, you're kind of stuck for that 10 minutes or whatever the period is. And what I found is that you can learn something from everyone. Even if they're your competitor, you can certainly learn something. If they're doing in a business that has nothing to do with what you do, you can learn something. So everyone, everyone and everything and every moment of that becomes valuable if you look at it that way. So I think I've become more open to different encounters because of uh, Zoom type meetings. Thank you, Rhoda. Mike. Um, you know, I think the, the COVID thing pushed me into retirement early. My, I was planning on 2020 being my last year of, of working full time. And as the year progressed, it, it just, you know, I realized I didn't need to be working. Um, and I had partners that, that were are younger and had more energy and more desire and push. And so that transition was pretty easy. Um, and so what I've found is that I got, I got time on my hands and, uh, which is great. And so, uh, learning how to relax, learning how to be patient, um, you know, filling my day with things that I enjoy doing. Um, you know, I'm not reading insurance manuals and periodicals and stuff. You know, I'm reading books. You know, there are actually books out there that are enjoying, enjoyable to read. Um, and I've got time to do that. Um, we've been uh, helping our granddaughters uh, go through, you know, Zoom school. Um, so we're with them every, some part of every day. Um, so family is great. It's, it's wonderful to be with, you know, with the young kids. And um, so just, you know, quality of life is, is really good. So uh, you're thankful for that. Thankful for family and health and all those kinds of things. 
Thank you, Mike. David Garrison, please. Um, before I answer that question, I want to jump back to, didn't get a chance to make a comment a minute ago about when we were talking about the response, um, the stimulus and response. It, it's, you can all take this for what it's worth, but I'm involved in a prison ministry, an ecumenical prison ministry. We, we spend four days inside of a prison with, with 20 or 30, 40 guys and kind of, it, it's a, it's a Christian ministry, but we talk a lot about very basic, very basic principles. And one of those basic principles for offenders is, do you react or do you respond? It's exactly the same thing we're talking about here today. So it's not just us that that's doing this. That's their reaction and response is what's probably put them in prison. Anyway, um, the, the, to the question, I, I think I'm reminded about the adaptability of the human spirit in a time like this. Um, Zoom has become a, a really big part of how I interact with my clientele, and the, the way that we're the way that we're forced to interact in person now. To, I, I'm so tired of masks. I mean, I wear them, but I'm tired of them. And when you're when you're face to face with someone with a mask on, you can't tell responses. You're constantly touching it. It's it's distracting. And this kind of interaction with people is far superior, even though it's not in person, it's far superior than to be grabbing your face all the time and trying to figure out what's on someone's mind. So again, the adaptability of the human spirit to me, this it, we've, we've made technology work for us. Um, I think in the future, it's gonna change how we, um, how, how we interact more. I mean, the idea of driving a half an hour or an hour to see someone when you can accomplish the same thing other than press his flesh or his or her flesh, um, it's just going to change how we how we work in the future. I think. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Jack. Yes, sir. You're on. Well, cool. Thanks. Well, you know, I I listened to what you all said, I, and I think what Mike said about relaxing and patience. I, I've learned that, and I've learned the value of hanging around with your family. Um, I kind of like them. I didn't, I never knew I did. You know, <laughs> and um, and then I, I've also kind of stop striving and started serving more um try to look for instead of uh that sounds selfish i guess but i but i've i've tried to find ways that i can serve as opposed to ways that i can achieve or gain and so it's been it's been a reflecting year for me it's been a huge growth year um and i think i'll have a little bit more growing in 2021 but i just stop striving start serving and that's just been my kind of my mantra thank you jack gerald Callan. I've learned that uh, a lot of people put off their estate planning and uh, uh, powers of attorney and things like that because they think they have to meet with someone. Uh, they don't have to meet with me uh, and they don't have to really meet with anyone because there are liberalized uh, rules now from the Supreme Court that allow documents to be witnessed uh, through the use of Zoom or like technology. Uh, the documents can be prepared and emailed back and forth. Uh, and uh, there's really no reason to wait because these things can all be accomplished during COVID. And we hope COVID goes away soon, but uh, one never knows what's coming next. And uh, these things can still be accomplished and done with the highest quality uh, through these new techniques. Thank you, Gerald. Hey, you know, just to sum it up, I think Alex and, and Adele and Gerald and all, you guys are hitting the point, like, be prepared and to be flexible. Uh, you know, that thing about the human spirit and adaptability, I, I think that's the win right there. We we just all have to be be prepared and be, and just be flexible. Uh, and the rest of it will take care of itself. So with that, uh, Jack, thank you so much. Thank For you. the rest of you, happy holidays. I will see you at the first of the year. We do have speakers lined up. Uh, uh, if there's anyone that needs to get in contact with me for any reason, just get a hold of me. Other than that, give me a smile. You got a smile. Hey, it had not been that bad. And let's get ready, get out of here, and go, uh, you know, be like me. Go get a nap.
That's important to me. <laughs> to nap, so I'll see you guys and thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Merry Christmas, everybody.